Half a century ago, a young Melbourne engineer broke into the Melbourne theatre scene and went on to become Australia's most produced playwright. What's the meaning of you telling me how to run the game? I'm the president of this club, Laurie, and if I've got an opinion to express, I'll express it! In retirement on Queensland's Sunshine Coast, the 79-year-old has done something he once said he would never do, write his memoirs. David Williamson, 20 years ago you were approached by a, a publisher to write your memoirs and you refused on the grounds that other people led more interesting lives. Why did you change your mind? Well, after I got to 50 years, I thought, I started looking back and think, well, my life has been pretty interesting when I look back on it. Uh, the people I've met, the things I've done, the amount of uh, stuff I've crammed into those 50 years and also the change in Australia has been interesting and I thought if I, if I do write it now I can also get the fact, um, facts about how much this society has changed over those 50 years. Uh, so it's a chronicle of me but also I think of the country. What do you think of Ross's potential? What is? A welterweight. <laughs> Your first breakthrough plays happened at the same time in Melbourne, the removalist and, and Don's party. Yet you write about having trouble fitting into the Melbourne theatre scene. Did you always feel yourself to be an outsider? Well, I did because for, for no good reason I graduated as a mechanical engineer, uh, not even knowing what went on under the bonnet of a car. <laughs> Uh, and I w went back to the university to do um, psychology after that, but I was sort of categorised as a, as a married engineer in the suburbs, which is the dullest form of human being, whereas these titans of Carlton were all arts graduates and they all were up with the latest drama theories and literary theories, and I did feel like a fish out of water at the start. The man who always makes the first move, believe you me. You want a bet? I'm taking you straight A lot of your characters are drawn from, from yourself and from friends and families and associates, often to their horror. And you write about, at times, drama over road ethics. Did you pay a price for that? I did veer a little closer to the truth um, of the social life I was observing sometimes than I should have, yes. In the early days, I thought I've got to get this right. And some of my friends were startled to see what they thought was representations of themselves on stage. Uh, I think they all, except one, uh, finally forgave me, but I had to learn a lesson. And um, as, as time went on, I'd always show drafts to people who might see themselves depicted to see if there's anything they objected to. But in the early days, I was a bit, um, fast and loose with ethics, yes. You, you confess to having difficulty handling criticism and you write about how you wasted so much energy on fruitless counter-attacks. Why do you think you found that so hard? I think that it's human nature to dwell on the negative things that have said about you rather than concentrating on the positive things. There were lots of positive things being said about me, but um, I remember the great Russian novelist Dostoevsky spent the whole of his life worrying about one critic in the Ukraine that savagely attacked him all the time. I think I was guilty of uh, over-obsessing about those who didn't like my work. Uh, of course, there will be people who don't like your work, and I, 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 I took a while to realise that. At the heart of your memoir is, is a love story, the relationship between yourself and your wife, Kristen. But it's not always a flattering portrait of yourself. Now, you can't hide behind a character you're creating for the stage here. Did you find that difficult to write? Yes, I, I particularly object to memoirs that are puff pieces for the person writing it. I thought, I've, I've spent my life exposing the foibles and, uh, and problems and faults of other human beings, so I've got to be honest with myself. And I was, um, uh, there were some episodes of my life with Kristen that I deeply regret and shudder every time I rethink of uh, what I did because I truly love her and I still can't understand how badly I treated her at a few points in our relationship. You write about a crisis 
in your marriage are about the time you were writing The Perfectionist. Not at the time, but since we've been here, I've had time to think. About what? About our marriage, and I'm worried. Oh, nothing wrong with our marriage. Save all that psychological bullshit for your clients. Stuart. And, and it is resolved with your wife having an image of you in the future as a guy at a piano at peace with himself. Are you any closer to becoming that guy? I think so, yeah. Um, Yes, Kristen, uh, almost despairing uh, of my behaviour, then was going to give up. And then she saw me sitting peacefully there and did see this image of the future um, uh, in which I would be a reasonable human being. And uh, I think for quite a while, I, I, hopefully I have been, and we're still together and still very happy. Hi, I'm Lee Sales. Thanks for watching this story. If you'd like to watch more of 730's stories, they are on the left of your screen. And tap on the button below to subscribe and get the latest from ABC News.